So let me tell you a story about how I flew a plane to Russia the other day and what my thought process was flying to Russia versus Japan or Alaska. Hi, my name is Darren. I'm a dad, airline pilot, husband of a scientist, and this was a scenario event that happened, of course, in the flight simulator. I'm actually finally done with my 777 training at a major airline. Now, the flight was a flight from Shanghai, China to Chicago, and it was a more of an exercise in thinking and how operations work over Asia and Russia. Of course, the uh, Chinese, they use meters instead of feet. So we took off out of Shanghai, and they're giving us altitudes in meters, and we, we had to convert it to feet. We fly feet, talk in meters. There's a button we can press on triple seven that shows us the meter, so it's not too hard. But flying along, flying along, and a couple hours into the flight, we were fast-forwarded, of course. And now we're past Japan and right next to Russia, and something goes boom meaning an engine failed. What are you going to do? So let's talk about it. So a few things about jet aircraft. No jet aircraft I've ever flown has been able to stay at altitude, meaning up in the 30s, you know, the flight levels, with just one engine. So losing an engine on 777-200, you're going to descend. And, you, and in this case, we had to go down to about 21,000 feet from 33,000 feet. So, engine failed, you're descending anyway. And I'm sure someone's saying, just turn around and go back toward Japan. Well, let's look at the numbers real quick. Let's put up some range rings and see how far things are away from the pass row intersection. So, Russia is right at 300 miles, right from pass row. So, it's just a right turn, 300 miles, and there's a nice piece of long pavement, safe and secure, on the ground. Going back to Japan, the nearest airport is over 800 miles away from where we, the engine failed. Is it worth it going that far on just one engine over a giant ocean? In Alaska, it's well over 1,000 miles. So this is the no man's land of the scenario. Where are you going to go? And you have to make the difficult decision to fly into Russia. In this case, it's UHPP Petro Pavlovsky Kamachki Airport. It is an airport that's almost sea level, 131 feet, but if you look at the elevation around it, they have peaks at over 11,000 feet. It's in a bowl. The missed approach for this airport runway is very complicated, and you go in and make a big turn and come back out again toward terrain. So we secured the engine, ran checklists, made the announcement, coordinated to land on runway 34 left in the UHPP. Uh, this approach is very complicated. Why? They use meters and Q. F E and not Q N H, and that's a whole different topic for another discussion. But it's a different way of, of uh, measuring altitude, right? And they use meters, so we have a chart. Well, actually, Jefferson puts a chart on this uh, approach plate for us to convert meters to feet, and we ask for Q N H. We do not use Q F E. So everything looked really good until we're on short final, and then the tower said, "Unfortunately." Putin has not approved your landing. Please go around, fly the published mist. It was an exercise for us. So we actually flew the single engine published mist. It was tight and very unnerving being that low to the ground. We were in a heavy triple seven and doing that turn inside of terrain. Of course, it all worked out fine because we were in a simulator, right? But it was, it's very eye-opening uh, going from a near-body aircraft to a wide-body aircraft. Went through the Airbus, oh, we call the United States, Central Mexico, even South America, there were many airports we could drop into in case something went wrong. When you're over an ocean, it's not that easy, right? Uh, I, I was taught over the last few weeks to always think about where you're going to go if you're on fire, where you're going if you have a mechanical issue, and where you're going if you have a medical issue. They're often not the same airport, right? There's a hierarchy involved. Uh, fire, you want the nearest piece of pavement pretty quickly. Um, if, you, if you're a mechanical, it depends on the mechanical situation. And, of course, sick passenger, it also depends. That's kind of the four Bs uh, involved in a, in a, in a uh, medical diversion that we go right away. Uncontrolled breathing, uh, so uncontrolled bleeding, active uh, birth. Uh, if a shock has been uh, given by the AED or if, they're, if, they're, if they are actually doing CPR on you, the breathing thing. But otherwise, it depends. And knowing that my airline has contacts with all these airports we don't even fly to is also very interesting. But what would you do in a situation if you were flying next to Russia and you lost an engine? Would you go to Russia or would you risk flying several hundred miles 
many more hours to get to Japan or even longer to get to Alaska. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing. If you don't want to, I get it. Fine. But either way, have an absolutely wonderful day and thank you for stopping by.